The City's Son in a Line is about uh, a teenage graffiti artist called Beth who um, has a, a very kind of serious falling out with her best friend. Um, she feels like she's been very badly betrayed by her. Uh, she gets herself kicked out of school. Uh, she meets a very weird looking, weird acting homeless boy uh, who calls himself Phileas V.I., the son of the streets. He uh, has got pavement grey skin and sweats motor oil and carries a uh, park railing for a spear. And together they have to uh, save the city from Reach, the King of the Cranes, who is a maniacal kind of crane-fingered demolition god. And this all takes place in a kind of hidden London full of magic and monsters and uh, glass-skinned street lamp spirits and uh, the, the pavement priests who are a, 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 an order of, of, of clerics who wear stone and brass and concrete robes for penance so they look exactly like statues. Um, and that you know, and runaway train ghosts, and that's sort of order of business. People used to mythologize their environments all the time. You have dryads, you have naiads, you have you know look, look back at kind of um, some of the kind of native mythologies, and literally every rock, stone, mountain has its own spirit. And part of that, obviously, is pre-scientific theorizing. But I also think part of it is about justifying a need that we have to relate to our physical environment as more than just kind of inert stuff. It's about feeling about where we live uh, as in that it's such a thing that is, can love us or hate us or do us harm or threaten us or hunt us. Um, and we lose that to a certain extent with the city. I think because we have this notion that we built it. And yet, I was born in the city, and I didn't build that skyscrapers, and I feel awe for it, the same way that you might feel awe towards a mountain. And I think I wanted to cast the city in those kind of metaphorical terms to bring it to life in such a way, because I kind of already feel that way about um, it. And so I decided if to I think were that way about to write well. at home, then I would discover very quickly that I had an empty fridge, um, a, a rapidly expanding waistline, and an encyclopedic knowledge of the West Wing, and no words. Uh, so I tend to write at the Royal Festival Hall. It's a public space, it's nice and light and airy. I take my laptop out, I'll sit there for three or four hours in a day and try and get a thousand words done. I try and get a thousand words done every day, uh, which isn't a huge amount. It's, it's probably only two hours concentrated writing, but um, it's enough that you can kind of, you've got something to work over the next day and keep building. Uh, and, uh, and that'll get you a, a first draft in six months, easy. And then you can spend the next six months making it work. I do, all, the interesting thing is that for me personally, um, I always feel like uh, writer's block is my, intern my own internal critic getting too loud. So I figured just write something, I'll fix it in the edit. And then you can just kind of polish it up and continuously build it up. Um, that said, that's just how I do it.